All right. Well, I'm not going to read out of the phone book. Uh, again, thanks for the nice introduction there, Alan. Alan and I just spent some time together in January with some North Star pastors going to uh, Israel and uh, enjoyed that time together, and that was fun. Um, that's just one of the things that North Star does to, to try to encourage pastors. For me, I've been a pastor here in, our, in the region for uh, about 45 years. And uh, not until recently did I just step out from Warrington Baptist Church, which is where I was, uh, just until April of this year. And then I've gone to work for, for North Star. Um, but I bring greetings from, from about 167 churches when I get to come that are working together to, to uh, change this world for Jesus. Amen. That's what we, it's going to take all of us together because we're all on the same side of the field is what I like to say. You know, churches don't compete with one another or they shouldn't. We do often, but we shouldn't. We're all trying to do the same thing. And that is spread the love of Jesus everywhere we go and make a difference in this world for him. And, uh, and that takes all of us working together and praying for each other. So it's, it's nice for me to be here and uh, celebrate with you all. In fact, last week I was over in the Plains at, at uh, Long Branch Baptist Church. Uh, they were 237 years old, so yeah, they got you beat, you know. But hey, 188, nothing to sneeze at. That, that's really great, 188 years uh, old. And um, well, one thing that I want to do, though, is we got to record this moment, you know. In, in history, they always took selfies throughout 188 years. So, you ready? Every, everybody wave. This is our happy anniversary photo. All right, good deal. That, now it's recorded for posterity's sake, you know. That goes into the records. The, uh, anyway, so uh, I bring greetings again via, via the, the, with North Star Association. And uh, I get to try to help encourage folks like uh, Pastor Allen. You're def definitely blessed to have him here. Uh, and today's special for me, too, because it's my birthday. Um, so, yeah, I'm, <laughs> thank you. I am 23,424 days old today. <laughs> yeah. Well, now, wait, I don't want to deceive you. Uh, it's not my annual birthday. You know, we tend to only celebrate a birthday once a year. It's not my annual birthday. It's my daily birthday. In fact, yesterday was my birthday, too. I was, I was 23,423 days old yesterday. We had cake. We sang songs. It was awesome. You know, I've got, I've had a lot of birthdays like that. I believe that, you know, you celebrate every day as your birthday. I mean, that's why it's called birthday, right? So, oh, I've had some good stories, all these birthdays I've had, you know, all 23,424 of them. And this one, I get to be with you all, that goes in as a, a big one. I mean, when I was on my 5,060th birthday, my little brother was born. Changed our family's life. That was quite a birthday for me and him too. On my 8,324th birthday, I got married on my birthday. That was nice. Today is, so today is my 15,100th day anniversary. Oh, my wife, she likes to celebrate those daily anniversaries. So I know we're kind of clowning around, we're joking a little bit, but I want you to know that that's my story. It's my story right now is a long story. It's 23,424 days today. My story is a long story, but actually scripture tells me that my story is ongoing. The Bible tells me that my story is part of a bigger story that my story is part of God's eternal story. And like you all here, each of you, your birthday's today. Happy birthday, by the way. But 188 years, North Fork 
has been here as part of God's story as well. Each of you is living out your story today, but you're also living out God's story. And you're doing that not only as individuals, but even as a church and a community of believers. Living out God's story. You know, so there's some things before we get started in the scripture, and it's a very familiar scripture today, is I want you to hear three things, and we'll, talk, we'll say them once again at the end of this time together. But I do want you to know that God is the author of your story. He, he's the one writing your story. And I want you to know today, too, that your story is not just a story that's celebrated once a year, but it's a daily story. It's eternal, yes. According to the Bible, you, you as a believer of Jesus Christ, you live from now till eternity. But your story is not just an eternal story. It's a moment-by-moment moment story. And in God's story, Jesus is the hero of that story. And in your story, Jesus is the hero. As we think about these things, I, I want us to get a different perspective as we think about God's story and our story and how they go together and how we celebrate these anniversaries, homecomings, and birthdays. I just want us to think about it just for a moment by going back and starting at the beginning. You know, let's go back to the beginning of this story. Now, this is a familiar verses. But if you have a Bible and you'd like to join me, I'd like you to turn to Exodus. I mean, Genesis, Exodus. Well, I skipped one, didn't I? I went one block too soon. Uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. And we're just going to read five verses here, but we're going to talk about how God started the story here. And how it starts not only his story, but ours. Because I want you to know, as we read this, that anything that we learn, we all know that, that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, correct? Yesterday, today, and forever. You, you can even respond if you want. I know if you uh, would. So, therefore, anything that we learn about God in Genesis chapter 1, or in Exodus, or anywhere else we look in the Bible, is true right now. And not only true now, but forever. Because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So what could we learn out of Genesis chapter 1 that would be relevant and, and life-changing for us today? I think there's a couple of things I want us to remember. So let's look. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. We could even all probably quote this together. But in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. Thanks, I'd like that. And there was light. And God saw the light, and it was good. And God separated the light from the darkness, and God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning. The first day. Let's pray again. Father, I just pray that in these eternal words that were the first words that are written for us to have about, about our history here on this planet, on, that, that, that you began. Father, I pray that your voice would be heard today, that all other voices would fade into the background and that you would help us to just zero in, learn something today that we could take home, in, not only in our pockets, but in our hearts that could change our lives and draw us closer to each other and closer to you. We pray that in the name of Jesus. Amen. So, one of the things that we learn right up front with this Genesis chapter 1 is that God is a creator. And by the way, he continues to create. 
He created this world, and, and no matter what you think about Genesis chapter 1 and 2, and, and you, you try to map it out, and everybody tries to do the, the math and, and the adding, and some people and the scientists and everything, is it seven literal days? Is it seven million years each day represent, you know, blah, 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 blah. But I tell you one thing for sure. God created the world. Amen? Amen? God created it. And that's what we're supposed to get right out of it. It's a characteristic of God that's not only true in Genesis chapter 1, but it's, it's true in Matthew chapter 1, and it's true today in our lives. That God continues to create. If there's anything we can learn out of Genesis, and that is this, the world is no accident. It's not an accident. God made this world with a purpose. If you believe somehow that this world came together and accidentally formed itself, if the world is an accident, then you're an accident. And I can tell you right now, that not only did God create the world in Genesis chapter 1, but he created you. Amen. You are not an accident. Turn to your neighbor and tell them they're not an accident. They are created by God. Now listen, in, in this, that's not just coming out of, I, I, I told you, God, what's character true about God in Genesis 1 goes all the way through the scriptures, all the way through eternity, and all the way into our lives and forever. And, and God not only created, how do we know God created us? In Psalm 139, it says that God knit us together in our mother's womb, that he knew our days before we even existed. And that, uh, that, that Hebrew word that, that David wrote in Psalm 139 says that he knit us together. It's where the finger work of God. The finger work of God, which means you got God's fingerprints all over you. That not only did he dig his hands into the mud of Genesis chapter 1 and make man and woman out of the dust, but he continued to do that each and every day with each of you. With his hands. You are handmade. Well, something's worth a lot of money if it's handmade these days, isn't it? You, weren't, you didn't come out of some human factory. You were handmade by God, his signature on you. It's important for us to remember that God continues to create. Paul said it this way, we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for the good works that he prepared before us. We are created for a purpose. Our young people need to hear that today. We need to hear that today, that we're not an accident, that God created us. Another thing about God is that, it, that we learn in Genesis is we, we could continue to read, and just lack of time means that we can't, we, I'm just reading you the first day, the first day. After that, there was a second day and the third day, and God created the world. What do you do on the seventh day? Rested, that's right. And, 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 then, and then what happened after that? The eighth day. I know it doesn't really record that in here, but you know, shout it out if you know it. But it's, it's not rocket science. Eighth day, and after that was the ninth day, tenth day. God continues as he was in Genesis to be a daily God. Not only the God of eternity, which we sing about and we talk about, but he's also the God of the moment. He's the God of this moment right now. I mean, sometimes it's hard to bring it and slow it down and to take a pause and to realize that God is a God who is a daily God. He was with me on my 23,400. 123rd birthday yesterday, and he's with me today. 
You know, we see it throughout the scriptures that God's a daily God. In Exodus, you know, he brought the manna down. You remember how he, he fed them in the wilderness with the manna? And when he would send them out to get the manna, he would send them out for, to get how much manna? One day. Just one day's worth of manna. Why? Because the next day he'll send more manna. You know, God's not a grocery store. He didn't say, come on out, get about all you need for a week, and then you go home like we do now. No, he said, well, I'll give you the day. And then tomorrow, you come out, I'll give you some more. He's a daily God. Psalm 118, verse 24 says, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It's in Lamentations chapter 3 that we're familiar with one phrase out of these verses in 22 and 23. It says, the steadfast love of the Lord his, uh, uh, never end. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Sound familiar? That's Lamentations. I like that verse because it says they're new every morning. God doesn't serve leftovers. Did you know that? He doesn't serve leftovers. No. No refrigerators and microwaves in heaven. Did you know that? You don't have to reheat anything because everything's fresh. Everything's fresh and new every day. That's the kind of God we have. A God who's new every day. In Isaiah, he says, hey, I'm doing something new all the time. I'm doing something new all the time. Lord's Prayer, Jesus taught us, he said, we just said it a minute ago, give us this day our daily bread. I want you to know that God is fresh and new every day, that we need to celebrate him as the God of the moment, not just the God of the years, of our history, 188 years, but of our future and of today, this moment. And when we do that, we keep it fresh so what, what else is one of the things that we find out is that God was there, of course, at the beginning. He was there. He was the only one there. He was there. He said, in the beginning, God created, oh, God was already here. The earth was without form and void, but darkness was over the face of the earth. But the Spirit of God was hovering. It was here. He was here. He's always present. God's a God not only who creates all the time, continually, but he's also a daily God, a God of the moment, not just a God of eternity. And he's a God who's always here. He's here. He's present. Day seven, when he, when he rested, as we all know so well, it was not the beginning of an extended vacation. Sometimes we treat God like that. Well, he got this world of spinning, and then he sat back in his lazy boy, and he kind of watches now. No, he continues to create. He continues to be active. He continues to be present. After all, that's one of the things he reminded us when he came in flesh as Jesus. He said, you shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. God with us. Whoa, now I get it. Yeah, he's always here. He's with us. He's present. The scripture tells us, and God says, I will never leave you or forsake you. Jesus said, I will be with you always. I don't think Jesus was just trying to make us feel good. I think he speaks the truth. And when he says, I will be there always, that's what he means. Always. In the, big, in the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, David wrote, because thou art with me. Oh, we sometimes forget that. We pray for God to be with us. We hope that God will be with us. Oh, God is with you. He's here. He's present. He said he'd never leave you or forsake you. We learn that from Genesis 1, that God is here. God also, he, he reveals himself here. I, now, I love this part. And this does come right out of these verses that we read on day one. It says, and, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. Yeah, I, I just love it. First of all, God says it, it happens. I love that. You know, don't mess with God. He says it, it happens. And he says, let there be light. And there be light. Now, uh, the thing that, that always was mysterious to me is that 
It's not until day three that God creates sun and moon and stars and all the things that we think about as light. So what was day one? Let there be light. And I believe that, in my opinion, this is when God reveals himself, the very first day that God is a God who reveals himself. Let there be light, enlightenment, let the, let the world, here I am. I think day one was God going, ta-da, here I am, let there be light, let there be knowledge, let, here I am. And then he gets down to the, the nitty gritty and the details of creation. But let there be light is, is that God continues to reveal himself and we find that God is the one who pursues. He is the one who initiates creation. He's the one who is always looking for us. He's the one that's always working. He's the starter. He's the one that makes it happen. And that, if that's true in Genesis 1, it's true throughout the scriptures. And you find that to be true, don't you? That God always shows up. He's always there. He's there to redeem. It says that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I mean, we weren't even looking for him. Boom, ta-da. I think Jesus was that best ta-da moment. Since, since Genesis 1, where he says, let there be light, he said, here I am. This is what it looks like. Let me speak of your language. And God became flesh and dwelled among us. I think that's why in John chapter 1, it's no accident that he says, in the beginning was the word. Everybody just rewound right back to that first verse that we read this morning. And the word became flesh and dwelled among us. Ta-da! Let there be light. I love that about God, that God's always right. Some of us think that you got to have a secret decoder ring or something. You know, you got to know the right way. you got to pray just the right way. You have to have that right position. Because, and if you do that, then God will answer your prayers. Or God might show you something. Oh, God's constantly wanting to show you stuff. That's the kind of God we have. He, he creates, he continues to create, he continues to be that God each and every day. He continues to reveal himself. And I think he continues to work. Psalm 121 says, God doesn't sleep or slumber, that our God is always working. God continues to work, he continues to be on the move. And he's not done with North Fork. He's not done. 188 years, that's a pretty big pat on the back. You could give yourself. But he's continuing to work. He's not finished. He's moving on ahead. And we might stay too long on our 188th homecoming, and God's already walking out the door. He's pulling out of the parking lot. He's saying, come on. We got more to do. We got a bigger world out there. Paul said it this way in Philippians chapter 3. He said, I forget what lies behind and I strain forward to what lies ahead. And I keep my eyes on the goal, which is Jesus Christ. You see, the Bible, if I can tell you this today, the Bible is God's story, isn't it? We all would agree with that. It's God's story cover to cover. From Genesis 1 to Revelation 22, it's God's story. He's the author of it. He's, it's his story. And Jesus is the hero of that story. And we see it from beginning to end. But here's what I want you to know today. That this book is your story too. It's your story too. And it's my story. In fact, somewhere, somewhere between, oh, let's say the end of the book of Acts and Revelation 22 is my 23,424 days. Now, you're not going to find that in the print. It's between the lines. Like your story. 
You see, you need to understand and for you to fully understand the wondrous mysteries of God and the fact that he is taking care of you is you need to know that in this book, God's story between these two covers is your story. Revelation 22, we're all there. You, you, you can, I can read it if you want where we all stand there together at the throne and we're singing and it's the beginning of all that eternity that we're going to be spending together. But in, before that happens, today, today, somewhere today is right here between the lines. You are part of God's story. God is the author of your story. Remember I said I was going to remind you of these three things. God is the author of your story. Another thing is that God is involved in your story daily. It's new every morning. For you, for the church. And Jesus is the hero of that story. Not only this story, but your story. So, to know Jesus is keeping your eyes on the goal. Do you know him? Do you know him today? Is he the hero of your story? It's easy to forget sometimes. And we become our own hero. Or we look for a hero. Someone to come in and save the day. But Jesus has already done that. And he's the hero of your story. Today and tomorrow. The next day. Because to, today, as we finish at Yom Kippur, of all days, there'll be evening and there'll be morning. And then it's the next day. And that's another thing we learn in Genesis is it keeps moving forward. So tomorrow, I'll celebrate my 23,425th birthday. I don't know what that is for you, but I hope that you celebrate it, leaning forward to continue to be all that God has meant for you to be. I pray that for you. I pray that for North Fork Baptist Church as you lean forward into what God has called you all to be. Let's pray again. Father in heaven, thank you so much for today. Thank you for this opportunity we have to share. And thank you for your story. Thank you for our story. And I just am thankful that right now, my story, your story, the story of all these folks here in this room are converging. They're crossing paths. And now we're all a part of each other's story. Thank you for that, God. I pray that you would use us to continue to be ambassadors for you, as you said in your word. Instruments of your righteousness Lord, that we might tell, that we might teach, that we might share the love of Jesus with all those who need to hear it. We pray it in the name of Jesus and for his sake. Amen.